Good, whatever it is, I'm Antalus. Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. So, we've got some sciencey things to do. And real quick, I've been going over the parts. I want these rocket parts because this liquid fuel engine will be better for space. Uh, let's see, can we show it here? So what we're looking at is the specific impulse, which is right here, the ISP. So 345 vacuum is actually really good, and that will let us go pretty far with this thing. So we're going to research this real quick. We're going to want a few electrical things like solar panels. And let's see what else. You know, honestly, I forgot I had this much science available. So I'm, more rocket parts would be useful. I'm not sure it's what we're going to go for. Let's take a look here. EVA stuff. Hmm, I, I misclicked there. Precision engineering. It would be nice to get some of these relay antennas. Oh, and bigger solar panels. That's going to take up most of our science if we do that, though. Do we have new science experiments that we can unlock first? I'm, I'm not sure we do. Yeah, I think it's going to be a little bit before we unlock those. So, specific impulse is 320. We've already got one that's better for vacuum. Bigger rocket pieces would be useful. But I'm not sure how much we need them. Specific impulse, 350. Yeah, the specific impulse over here, 345. So that is slightly better. But it really is only slightly better. This would let us put bigger rockets into space, at least more easily. Let's get this, because I do want struts. That's, that's mainly what I want from there. And then some nose cones. Ooh, radial decouplers. Oh. And fuel lines are here. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. You know what, let's do this one. And even though I'm probably not going to use most of this airplane stuff at first, I'm going to do that. We'll just go mainly straight across. And that lets us build our next rocket. So I'm thinking we're going to go for Minmus now. So we'll do a, a crew pod. And... Let's make sure that we get this thing set up properly. So it's going to need a heat shield on it. And I'm thinking we'll go for, for a flyby at first. Which means we need a... Well, I guess it doesn't guarantee it, but we need a decoupler. Oh yes, those will be nice. An inline reaction wheel? Oh, that's tiny. It's teeny tiny. It helps, so we'll take that. And what else can we get? All the sciencey things, of course. We'll put two of these on here because I think we'll pass through enough areas that we'll want the two. And mystery goo, Presmat barometer. I think this is one that we're okay to take the data from without any serious repercussions. So we're only going to put one on there, and we'll do our thermometer right here, and that looks interesting. I've actually never used one of these before. No more info. 50 G's, bunch of pressure. I think we're fine without that. And what else do we want? We're going to want a parachute, for sure. And actually, I'm going to slap... Let's see. I'm going to slap some of these other parachutes on there. 
We'll use the drug shoots. Like so. And let's get to actually building our rocket. What is the range on these? It would be nice to transmit some of our science back. Electrical, we're gonna need some solar panels. So we'll do that. I'm thinking. And that won't give us a whole ton of power, but it will give us enough that we should be okay for a little bit. And we'll do batteries like so. Awesome. Okay, let's get that rocket built on here. So we want to be more efficient with our upper stage here. So try that and engine. We'll use that new engine that's the Terrier. And how much does that get us? That gets us almost three kilometers a second of Delta V in space, which should be more than enough by a lot. And then we need our lower stage now. So, man, I can't remember where anything is right now, apparently. A decoupler. We don't need the Rockamax one because we don't have Rockamax parts. And we have the radial decouplers. Hmm. Oh. Oh. I, I meant to be doing that the other way. So, let's put this on the outside. And let's see what we can get from here. I don't want that whole thing. And then engines. We'll do the swivel. Man. Okay, four decouple. Decouple there. We want to get rid of everything before the parachutes fire. Let's make sure that we get our staging set up properly, and then we'll have our drogue shoots and then our actual parachute. I'm honestly not really sure anymore how much Delta V I need in this thing. So we're just going to go with ridiculous amounts of overkill. And we'll go into structural, and let's put some struts on these things. Oops, that was the wrong button. Go there to there, and there to there. Now that will make this whole thing more stable, which is kind of sort of really important. And then we'll need a nose cone. And honestly, I should strap this to the base, to this intersection of the rocket. So we'll do that. It's not pretty, but it will work. Actually, let's, uh, that's going to bother me, so we'll make it look a little bit better, even though I just said I didn't care. And so I think that's most everything we need. Let's give it some solid rocket boosters as well, which means that we'll need some more decouplers just to give it a, a little kick off of launch pad. And then, does it say a thrust weight? Yeah. Yeah, our thrust weight is pretty high there. So, we'll use these. And what does that get us? Thrust weight ratio of 1.67, 435 meters per second. So basically that's just going to take us above the launch pad. And then we'll ditch those and we'll fire up our main engines and be off for real. And... I guess I should just put some nose cones on those. So this isn't really the greatest looking rocket, but we just need to get there and back. So, and this should do that job just fine. And we'll strap this on the other side because these are going to give it quite a kick. And then the stability enhancers will go like that, I'm thinking. Why? Okay. I guess that's right. Let, 
let's just, I need to name this thing. We'll call this ice cream. Given we're heading to Minmus is the hope. We'll save and launch and see how badly we can fail with this thing. I mean, we'll totally make it there first try. SAS on and launch. Okay, perfect. And we're getting just that kick off of the launch pad right now. And let's actually move this one lower and we'll kick those on just before we get rid of these solid rockets. And or not, you know, that, that didn't exactly happen, but perfect, they destroy themselves, so only a few people on the ground have to worry about this. Let's take a look at our map and see how we're doing. Aparopsis is 10 kilometers. We're good on fuel. Oh, <laughs> I still left that pointless decoupler here, so we're just going to get rid of that right now. I don't think that's really going to make any difference as far as how far this thing can make it, but eh, I'll take it. Thrust weight ratio. We're good. Delta V for the stage is good. And we are not doing our turn at all for orbit. Oh, I, I turned too aggressively. And Aphoropsis is almost into space. And now we can begin going just a little bit more towards a straight up orbit. This thing really likes to roll. Or not roll. Yaw? So yaw. Go side to side basically when I try to move it in just a single direction. And we'll cut those off for now because we're well into space and we'll use this to just get a little bit of our orbit. And let's go time warp. And we'll lock prograde. Given we're doing physics warp, that will actually happen too. And we can do more normal warp now. One minute to apoapsis. We'll go a little bit. I'm going to do this without maneuver nodes just because I don't think I really need them right now. And that's probably me just being stupid. I think we'll be fine without. Okay, so delta V, we have three kilometers a second, pretty much two and a half. So that should easily get us into orbit. And let's turn that off. And. I really should have started that burn earlier, but we're going to deflect it by burning a... Not quite on our prograde, but I can't remember the names of all these things. I think this is prograde between radial. And as you can see up here, our periapsis height is increasing. We should make it out of the atmosphere just fine. And with delta V to spare, we should bring up our science alert thing and see available right now. Okay, one of my settings here is off, but we'll worry about that in a moment. And get our periapsis out of the atmosphere. And we're good in space now. Available right now, there we go. Material study, well, space, that's worth 32 science. We'll go ahead and do that real quick. Observe. And we'll keep that. Oh, and I forgot to put my antenna on board. Darn it. 
and EVA report. Okay, Jebediah, you can EVA and or that was only slightly creepy view. So Minmus, our second moon here, we'll go ahead and set as target and then let's schedule our burn. Okay, that is a horrible encounter. And also how much do we use? Oh yeah, we could easily make that. Up our site. Our Minimus Periapsis. We'll adjust that later. We're just going to go for that now. Because, yeah, we can just do more fine tuning once we're further out there. Let's actually drag this around a little bit. Because I know, like I just said, I can do my fine tuning out there, but I can be just a little bit more effective with the burn itself. And I think we're good. So we're locked on to that. 10 minutes to our burn. Go ahead and accelerate over there and watch our science for a bit. It gets really dark in here. I might need to start adding lights just so these things can be seen. And you know, I should probably accelerate a little bit faster than 10 times time acceleration. We have a minute burn, so we'll do it at about, yeah, about here. And go ahead and burn. And I can't even do physics works right now. That's unfortunate. So there's the moon. We will, I, we're gonna go past its orbit. Oh, oh geez, I have, mistakes have been made. Um, even though I said I was going for Mismus, apparently I targeted the moon. So let's, let's fix that. There we go. Lock on to that target. Yeah, and we should still be fine. Maneuver node in 43 minutes. Okay, we'll go ahead and warp towards that. Actually, I did install Kerbal Alarm Clock, so let's take advantage of that real quick. So node, one minute four, add alarm, and let's go ahead and warp. And this is gonna take a little bit because I can only do 100 times time acceleration, but we'll get there. And then let's watch our supplies. And the electrical charge isn't going to be as important, given I'm not going to be transmitting the science back as I thought I was going to, but it will still help. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and delete that. And fast forward just a little bit more forward. about 30 seconds. T minus 30 seconds will do it. And let's go ahead and burn. So this is what we wanted to do. It gets us all the way back to Kerbin as well. It doesn't quite get us in the atmosphere but we should have plenty of fuel left to do that. I'm trying to decide yeah we should be able to lower our, our periapsis and do a pretty low pass over Minmus. I'm going to pass about 15 kilometers over if I can target it that accurately. Just because 15 kilometers should get me all the low Minmus science, but it should be high enough that I won't crash into any mountains. I think the tallest are about 10 kilometers. So I'll only be 5 kilometers over the mountains, which honestly is a little bit frightening. Um, to see mountains within 5 kilometers and be hurtling past them at probably only a few hundred meters a second, but still. And that, that makes you very dead if you hit them. And, okay, we'll complete that. How far off does that put me? Periapsis, yeah, that's, that's a pretty high periapsis. But we'll go ahead and we'll add an alarm for, we'll do an SOI change alarm a minute before. And let's go ahead and accelerate. As we get further out, we can go into faster and faster material study 
48 science. We're gonna... I should save one of these. Because I'm pretty sure I'll get more science from being close to Minmus. We'll go ahead at a thousand times speed. We have four whole days until... We'll do that SOI change when I can do 10,000 times acceleration now. Awesome. Nothing super exciting is going on right now. Just because deep space. Well, we are about to do our sphere of influence change. That's what the SOI stands for in this. Curable alarm clock is incredibly useful. Some of these features, I believe, are now in the base game. But... I don't know. I'm used to using Kerbal Alarm Clock. I really like it. And what is Klops you? I mean, at least it lets me see if I need to do something. Did I? No, I haven't had my sphere of influence changed quite yet, have I? There we go. And so let's add a maneuver here. And we're going to burn closer. If I can use this and still be on my escape trajectory and get back to Kerbin, that would be ideal. What's our periopsis? 200 kilometers. Oh, no, that, that puts us back out into deep space. So we'll do a retrograde burn with that as well. Yeah, we should have this easy. Periapsis. It's 250 meters a second, and we'll have enough. 32 kilometer periapsis. How can I adjust it from here? Not impacting, please. That still could be an impact depending on where we pass. Uh, 25, come on. 22. 20. I think we can make this work. Go ahead and line up to maneuver node. And so if we add a maneuver here and just burn retrograde hard. That puts us in orbit of Kerbin. I think we should be fine to do that. So, let's go ahead and warp towards our maneuver node. minus 10 minutes and let's let's call out the map because as unexciting as this is that's even worse oh and we have science to do here too so let's EVA let's get your EVA report keep that data and board again we can do our material or our mystery goo and keep that let's expand this so I can see how much science each of these things is worth atmospheric pressure scan thermometer keep. Now some of these, because of the transmission rate back to Kerbin, I really wish I had something to do that, but eh, we'll be okay. And we need a crew report. Keep. And we're actually going to reset this lower one, I think. And observe. Keep. And oh, we're already past our maneuver node. So let's Go ahead and start to burn. Drop our periapsis height down to something reasonable. I mean, I guess it's not so reasonable to be passing within inches of the surface, but we're going to slow this down. And we'll just watch our periapsis here. And 15. There we go. So, 
What we're going to do now is we're going to try to prep all this stuff for coming back before we do our time warp. So let's go, we'll let go, and we're going to use our RCS, or not our RCS, our little jetpack here, our EVA propellant with that. Been a little while since I've flown this, I'm realizing. And we're going to collect the data, and remove, collect, and remove. And I am so used to Space Engineer's controls right now. And, oops, I keep hitting spacebar. And that's one of the things that throws me off about this, is that the controls are similar, but they're different. Okay, and then, come on, we gotta make it back inside. And, oh geez. How do I make him rotate? Different rotation. It used to be that I could just move the camera and he'd rotate based on that, but I guess it's not anymore. That's interesting. We're also way over time, so I'm going to figure out how to get Jeb back inside, but I'm Intels. I'll catch you later.